Bill, September 9th, you are set to face Daniel Jacobs in a rematch of your last fight that ended because you suffered a second round injury where your ankle, you broke your ankle. You're good to go now, but how is the rehab process with your ankle and getting healthy again? The rehab process is always difficult, uh, especially the older you get, you know, I'm in my mid thirties, but you know, I take care of myself as much as possible. I did six months of rehab afterwards, and then uh, the rehab just started coming better and better the more I started coming into the gym. So the gym is my rehab, my sanctuary. So once I started getting hungry, I uh, tape up my ankle, brace it, and then hope for the best. On, on bad days, I take an leave. On good days, I don't have to take nothing. What kind of workouts, what kind of drills did you do in order to build your ankle back up? Uh, just basic uh, rehab that I was doing uh, at Curl and Job. They have, they have great physicians there, and I was doing my, my regular stuff there. And then when I started coming here, I just took it easy in the ring. Little by little, I started putting more pressure on it. Then I started sprinting. Then I started you know, going side-to-side side drills and lateral movement. So just little by little, you start having more confidence. But uh, I'm always going to have to tape it and brace it just for uh, mind's sake. In that first round of the first fight, he drops you. You come right back and drop him. It seems like it had the makings to be the fight of the year. Before you suffered your injury, what are your thoughts on where the fight was headed? Well, I trained for the distance. Uh, he, he's the type of fighter that doesn't like going the distance. Most of his fights end by knockout. He's a very strong young fighter. I'm a, more of a wily veteran that likes to go the distance. So when he knocked me down in the first round, I didn't expect that. I don't get dropped like that. I got up. I, I wasn't hurt or anything like that. It was a flash knockdown, but I knew his immaturity was going to come out and try to stop, stop me, and then uh, I was able to catch him. We, we know that uh, Jacobs has a suspect chin, and, and his technique is uh, flawed, and he was in his hometown. You know, hometown fights are always bad. I tell people, man, you, wanna, you don't want to fight in your hometown. You know, it's, it's a burden. Now, he has said in multiple interviews that he doesn't want to face you again. He's not happy about fighting you. Yeah. You're a boring fighter. He sees no reason for the rematch because he proved himself already. What are your thoughts on what he said? Well, yeah, if I was him, I would say the same thing. You know, there's certain type of fighters that you don't want to face again, you know. Uh, I can name certain fighters that I wouldn't want to face again, but I don't want to tell them that. Uh, but, yeah, there's certain fighters, you know, are always going to give you a hard time. And I'm, I'm that type of fighter where it can be where I can be fighting Mosey, Vernon Forrest, rest, rest in peace, or uh, Daniel Jacobs. You know, I'm going to give all these guys trouble. Uh, I, I could understand why a champion wants to move on and put me in the past, but he can't do that, man. I mean, we, we, had, a, we had a great round one. Let's finish the job. And you can finish the job, then you can move on. What kind of problems does he, po does he pose for you? What do you have to do in order to prepare for him the second time around? Well, look, I know that he punches hard, and I knew that going into this fight. Now um, I'm sure that he punches hard. So, uh, you know, we, we want to avoid the, the, the punches that he hit me with or he tried to hit me with. Uh, we know that he – that we know how he's going to come out, and we know the power he has. So uh, we just got to take him into the later rounds and, and uh, you know, drown him. That's, that's a game plan. You know, it's always a game plan. Frustrate him, get him into the late rounds, bang him in the body, make him realize that I punch harder than, than everyone says I do. That's also a, 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 a trait of mine that, that people don't understand. Everyone says I can't punch. And once I get in there and I pop him in the chin, it's like, wait a minute, everyone says he couldn't punch. But you still have to deal with me 10, 12 more rounds in there, and by that time it's too late. I drowned you. So that's what I want to do with him. Now, without giving up too much of your game plan, is that the game? Is that the, the what you have to do September night? You gotta you gotta just smother him. You gotta make him uncomfortable. What do you have to do in order to win this fight? I don't have to do nothing. He all the pressure's on him. He's a young champion that's knocking out everybody. You know, I'm the guy that's getting another opportunity at a world title that everyone says I don't deserve. I'm the best name on his resume, yet people won't give me credit for it. Um, I have nothing to prove, man. I've had a, 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 I'm having a great career. I'm having a great run. You know, this is this is an opportunity that Al Heyman is the one that, 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 he's the only one that made this happen. Everyone else didn't campaign for this rematch to happen. Al Heyman promised me that he was going to give me a big fight when I was at the hospital the day it happened. And sure enough, he came through with his, with his, uh, with his promise. And now I got to go and uh, fulfill my end of the uh, job and put up a great fight. Mentioning Al Heyman, you are a PBC fighter. How has your career been since you've joined the PBC and the rest of that roster? Look, I've been with every promoter and manager that, people say are the best and um, I can literally say the that they, they they were good at that point of my career at this point in my career the only one that could have gotten me this title shot and in front of the people that, that he's putting me in front of and the TV audience and 
it's only Al Heyman. You know, the future is with Al Heyman and PBC. And, you know, we, we as fighters want to be paid well and we want to be on TV. Those are two things that he's providing for every fighter, whether he's a name or whether he's just a four-round fighter or a six-round fighter. No other promoter could uh, uh, do that. No other manager could do that. No other, no other uh, program could do that. So I'm, I'm happy with the PBC and, and with Lou DiBella, Al Heyman, everybody. You've been in the sport a long time. You're already in your mid-30s. How much more do you have left in the tank? We're going to find out in a month, you know. It's a world title <laughs> fight. You know, so look, I'm, a, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I feel like I'm 25 because I don't. You know, I, uh, I, I, I give it all I have in here, but shit, man, boxing breaks you down. So we're going to find out in a month. You know, uh, I'm going up against a strong, young, hungry champion that wants to prove a point, and I want to become a two-time, two-division world champ. So, you know, this is what, what, what dreams are made of, and that's what greatness is about, you know, going against the odds. Sergio, thank you for your time, and best of luck to you. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.